Bruce Sydney stack about the place too. Clever, low, brilliant, Lockhart! He's been a nice little addition, Jay Lockhart. Backed himself. Welcome to Inside Melbourne, Clint Stanaway with you alongside Lily Mithen, Jack Viney and this week's special guest Jordan Lewis, crew. G'day. Morning. Hello. Morning. Where's the coffees <laughs> that I was promised? Well, you can ask Jack Viney that. I think oh, it's I his went go. to go get them, but the cafe didn't, well, they claim they didn't open till seven, so I got knocked back. Uh, you're right. I've already had one. So Believable? Right. No. <laughs> just well, it just stingy, is, surely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. No, I'm, I'm good for my word. And... Uh, I don't know what cafe does. What cafe doesn't open before seven a.m. these days? Yeah, is that is that a common thing? I think the good ones usually open at seven. To ah, sort okay. of Well, you miss that six to seven traffic. That's oh yeah. I got one near me. He's unbelievable. It opens at five thirty. Does it? Damn. See, and it, there's a line out the door at six. Welcome back I to Talking Coffee. Why, that is a good, a good cafe. Everyone needs a good coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, hey, Jack, I want to start with you. Um, out for a couple of weeks. Yeah. W- what's the latest? Um, still that uh, <laughs> at this point. Yeah, bit of a uh, bit of a sore shoulder from the weekend, um, which will which will take a pretty conservative approach with. So um, yeah, looking to to miss this one and uh, yeah, hopefully it's not. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping to get back for next week. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> Uh, we didn't get the chance to speak to you last week because of the tight turnaround between matches, but um, it was obviously um, that pretty heavy bump that you copped out yep. on the wing, I think. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just um, turned around and saw this, saw him in my grill and <laughs> hit me and I just had had enough time to kind of brace up and um, I think looking back on the, the vision, I had like, a, I saw him for a split second, but I think my initial reactions to like, run through it mm. um, but I just wasn't um, I hadn't prepared for, for contact as well as uh, I, I should be and uh, yeah just hit the shoulder in the funniest position and did a little bit of damage so um, yeah I gotta, gotta let it respect that and let it rest up and heal up you saw it was a young kid brace yourself and thought you'd take him on <laughs> I turned around and saw hey, someone I saw someone it doesn't matter who it was I was gonna be trying to run through them um <laughs> But yeah, I was I turned around, I was just like I thought I was like in space. Yeah. And then he was just in my grill. But uh, contact sport. <laughs> that happens from time yeah, to time. Yeah, it does happen. And uh Geordie, great occasion, Anzac Day Eve, but not quite the result we wanted. No, it was it was my first time actually playing in the game. The last two years I've been in the box and been quite envious of the boys walking out when there's seventy, eighty thousand people. Uh, The lights are turned off and all you can see is the torches on the iPhones um, and complete silence. So it was a bit of an eerie feeling walking out, but um, we had two soldiers come into us, uh, come into here the previous day and speak about their journey and their tours of Afghanistan and what it really meant to them. So, you know, going out there and with that in the back of my mind, and I've also walked Kokoda Trek, so that sort of, I had flashbacks to that. And um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. the performance wasn't um, a four-quarter performance, but certainly we took a step in the right direction and were more competitive. And um, yeah, but the night itself, and then I was fortunate enough to go to Anzac Day game as well, and that was just a, another truly amazing experience. And um, I think the AFL community do it so well in terms of recognising um, past and current soldiers and, and what they've done for this country and um, on such a big stage. Jordy, I want to do something that we don't do until the back end of this show, and that is grab a question from the outer and run with it. Um, it's a simple one. It's from Shawnee Fish. Keeping in mind we're one and five at the moment, he says, how the heck do we get out of this mess? <laughs> um, it, it, I think it's, um, as a player, I suppose you're always trying to draw an experience. And, yep. and I've, I've been in this situation before. Um, in 2010, we were one and five, funnily <laughs> enough. Um, and we came out of that to, to make finals. And um, I think from a playing point of view, what we felt on the weekend and what we've reviewed is we're not too far away. Like a 40 point loss um, sounds big, but the way we review the game as in depth as anyone out there, um, we felt like we just need to make a few better decisions, I suppose, around the ground. 
with the ball and without the ball and we think we can capitalise a little bit more than we have been um, but as a player I think any player remains optimistic and there's clearly people out there that have written us off but when you're inside the club and when you're training every day you're reviewing the game like we do and we come up and we compete um, any player in here remains optimistic that we can turn it around not just written you off, but sunk the boot in. David Schwartz says not one player on the list has improved on last season. Mark Robinson says the club has failed to mentally recover from that belting over in West Coast in the prelim final. I mean, the critics are circling and some would argue justifiably so. Well, I don't think the mental one's justifiable. Like, how do you justify that? It's, that is just a throwaway line that mm. grabs a headline. It's, I mean, he's never been inside. He doesn't see mm. how we carry ourselves every day. Um, so they're the comments as players that you just you don't even look at, to be yeah. honest. It's quite hysterical. Um, David Swartz is another former grade of this club and has his opinion, and that's it's clearly that we haven't improved on last year. That's probably an obvious way to describe how we're going. Um, but internally we remain optimistic, and, and people might think that's quite bizarre, but that's, that's where we sit. We're, we're one and five, obviously, but we don't think this year is finished in any sense so um, we come to training today and every single day trying to get better trying to stay in the moment and um, trying to get ourselves back on track and Jack it was good to see sort of a few mix-ups we had Tommy Mack go back in defense and Melky play through the middle it's it's nice that you know it's good to see the club trying new things and um, different things being thrown out in the um, park each week but how did you sort of assess those changes on yeah, game day I thought they were good um I thought Tommy was really solid for us down back. Um, you know, when it's no, no secret we uh, we haven't been playing our best football, so I looked for for different avenues to try and find a bit of a spark. And um, you know, Tommy's played a lot of football down back, and uh, I thought going down there, he was uh, was very good for for the day. So uh, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens this week with with selection and, and whether they keep keep with that. But um, all in all, I thought those those. Um, yeah, those moves were, were pretty good. And you allude to the defensive effort being, you know, a lot better uh, in the Richmond match. <laughs> so now is it about improving what has to be improved forward or centre? Is that is that fair? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, like there's obviously been a... Defence has been the number one area we've, we've tried to improve, but there's been holes in, in all three phases of our game. So um, there's, there's a lot of a lot of improvement to be done. And, uh, you know, we, we did fix up... or we have we have been trending... Um, better um, in the defensive contest side of it um, but there's still a lot of work to be done in those areas and then also yeah you know how we're using the football going forward our um, you know efficiency to uh, to I guess convert those those uh, defensive efforts into scoring opportunities for ourselves it's it's all part of the system and um, all of it needs needs some work. Um, Jordy, one more a few barbs came flying your way as well I mean how does that sit with you and I, I know you say you know, you, you try your best not to listen to it, but, you know, talking about topping up re retirement funds and all the like, um, how do you react to, to something like that? I move on. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, there's no benefit of me reading into it. Mm. Someone's opinion, that's okay. Yeah. you two, I've, you've I've two opinions. Hard. You're two matches back now um, from what was a, a pretty big break um, due to injury. And do you think that is unfair, those sort of comments? Oh, I... Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I've, I mean, I played 60% of the first game back and then I played 85% of the game on the weekend. So effectively nearly one and a half games mm. when players have already had four games under their belt. So it's, I mean, you do you do take a risk coming in and, and not playing a game before you perform at the highest level possible. So there's always that risk element to that. Um, and when the side's not playing its absolute best, well, they look for people who aren't playing their absolute best and try and... Yeah get some traction on, you know, they wouldn't pick on a younger guy because that wouldn't gain any traction in the media. So they pick on a guy who probably can cop it. You know, an older guy, I've been around, I've, I've been in this situation so many times in my career, so it's hardly new to me. Um, and you just, you, the older you get, um, I suppose the more resilient you get and the, um, the less you read into comments that are made. Yeah. I don't, I've, that's the first time I've actually heard that comment, but that's garbage. Like, I don't know who said it, but I don't know. It doesn't sound like a uh, yeah, a very very good thing to say. I don't think, um, particularly uh, knowing Jordan and the effort and 
um, you know, what he's giving to this football club. I think it's very unjust, justified and, um, yeah, I don't think it does anything, but it's just, spe- you know, trying to create, um, you know, views and, and whatnot. So, yeah. Not but that's the world we live in, right? Like, yeah. Like, unfortunately, and not that it's journalists, but journalists don't have time to actually do their research, come mm. to training, come inside the club, gather information, because if they do that, well, then the story might get out in other avenues, mm. social media. So that's, it's unfortunate the world we live in, and I feel a little bit sorry for the kids that are just starting out because you don't know where and watching this can lead. It. You know, it's, um, I often think, like, when my son's 18, is this a really good environment to be in? Like, yeah, it's, it's a great game to play, but everything else that comes with it, do you really want to be involved in that? And that's a decision kids have got to make. And we, we are we are a um, you know a juicy story at the moment, and so people are going to come after individuals, the team, um, when it's not necessarily justified. It's just um, you know we're uh, we're the hot uh, hot story. So let's try and create some or add some more fuel to the fire. Um, the only one we can change that, we've got to win. I was yeah, going to say, there's a good way to remedy yeah. that, and that's Saturday afternoon. Yeah, we, we understand that. At yeah. the G um, against a team that you know a thing or two about, Jordan. Well, it feels Hawks. so long ago. It's, <laughs> it's weird, like, even year to year. Um, I was going to say, personnel-wise, there probably wouldn't be. Personnel, like, I look at their side, and there's not too many people that were around when I was there, and this is two and a half years ago, so lists so change quick over. Quick footy moves. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're... I mean, they're going okay. They they got away with a win on the weekend against Carlton. Carlton played a really good first half, um, and then Hawthorne came back as they do. They've always got that ability to, to stay in the game and and put on some some scores really quickly. So, um, yeah, they're they're a, a fantastic organisation. Doesn't really matter who's in the side; they'll still play the same way and still play the way that they want to play. And um, yeah, it's a really big challenge for us. What do you reckon, Jack? How do we beat them? What's the plan? Well, we've got Oppo today. We'll sit down today. We'll digest. Uh, we'll see what they, they're, they're going to throw at us and how we can, I guess, counteract it and, um, yeah, try and get back to – I mean, we're still trying to find our feet in terms of our, you know, how we want to play the, foot, um, play the game. So um, whilst we'll have a, uh, an idea of, of how we want to beat Hawthorne, a lot of it will be around, um, you know, continuing on our, on our path and trying to find our feet again. A lot of questions here again um, about whether the season is salvageable. I know that you've spoken, touched about this, touched on this already very briefly before, Jordan. But is it salvageable? Absolutely. Yeah, I think what we've seen this year is it's probably as unpredictable as I've seen. Mm. Um, you know, sides losing when they should be winning and winning when they should be losing. And um, I know we've we've got a lot of ground to make up, but I, I seriously and and honestly remain optimistic absolutely yeah i th- i can understand from a supporter's point of view because you've got no control so you're like yeah you're probably giving yourself um you know you don't you don't want to be hurt too far into the season so you go okay we, we can't really win this season but if we win it's going to be a really good story so i can understand from a, a supporter's point of view how they justify that and how they feel that but from a playing point of view absolutely optimistic and is, do you do anything differently coming against an old side? I know you sort of touched on that it is different personnel, but is it a weird, like what's it sort of like for you to come against, you know, an organisation that you spent so much time with? Yeah, I, it is quite bizarre. I remember when we first played against them, I just, the thoughts that I had in my head were like, you know, what are people thinking of me? Whether it be Hawthorne supporters, Hawthorne players, Hawthorne staff members. And I just, it really just took my focus off the game. Um, so I learned a really good lesson there just to concentrate on what I can do and as simple as, as it sounds, um, focus on the first bounce and then that sort of gets my attention really sharp and then, you know, what's my role? And then that gets my attention really sharp on that rather than thinking about all the other stuff that I can't control. You learn over time just to focus on little things, you know, that keep you, I suppose, involved in the game. Good stuff. Uh, great start. We're going to come back after this short break on Inside Melbourne with your questions from the outer with thanks to Zurich. Thanks to our co-major partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich. For over 100 years, they've been ensuring the people and the things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love Melbourne. Welcome back Inside Melbourne with thanks to Zurich and this week against the Hawks, 
We are celebrating the work of the Breast Cancer Network of Australia and the Pink Lady match, hence why we're wearing... Do you want this, Lil? No, this beanie? no, happy for you to wear it. All right. Yeah, promise. I've got not much hair, so right. I'll happily do that. Um, Pink Lady match. So, as I say, the work funding breast care nurses right around Australia, they do great work, the Breast Cancer Network of Australia, boys. Absolutely. Both my wife's um, grandma and nan passed away from breast cancer, so there is that link to my family. I actually wore pink boots one game mm -hmm. kick five goals so I might Ooh. have to try and smash the um, <laughs> back <laughs> smash the glass <laughs> cabinet there and grab them back out there's our forward option all of a sudden yeah. uh, very nice let's get stuck into it questions from the outer uh, there are many questions from the outer for one Jordan Lewis so you got one to kick us off Will oh I didn't have one. Oh yeah you can answer this guess Tom Sanderlands aside from Viney who was the best young leader at the footy club I like I've been put in the young category. I'm happy with that. Yeah, how old are you now? <laughs> Just turned 25. Um, best young leader at the club? Definitely not track. Definitely not Clary, surely. No, I, I mean, I think Clary's got potential. It, it's one of those ones where it's like, do they want to do it? You know, I think if, if guys commit, like, if Clary really wanted to be a leader of the football club, clearly he is on field. But if he wanted to do the other stuff that comes with it off field, he could. Um, I mean, I think Tommy Sparrow shows leadership qualities. He's in his first year, so he might be a little while away. Um, so he would probably be the one that I would throw up with, with qualities that you can see down the track. I've got one. Does Freddie, who's your son, does he ever give you, <laughs> does, does he ever give you advice? Uh, he looked apart when running out with you for, on your 300th. Yeah, that's probably thanks to my wife. Um, some of the outfits they have are quite extraordinary. Um, <laughs> but yeah, every, every time I leave home, it's always kick a goal, Dad. So I've let him down every single time I've left home, but he just doesn't <laughs> know that yet. Anthony Vella, as an extension to that, says um, you actually started your career in the forward line at Hawthorne with some success, given you're a very good finisher, struggling somewhat to get a score. Can you see yourself returning to a forward position up forward? I've seriously played every single position you can think of. <laughs> I've played defensive forward, I've played forward, I've played half forward, mid, wing, defender, sub, <laughs> <laughs> everything. I think I'm well qualified to maybe comment on every position. Would have been a memorable one when you started as... Uh, when I kicked those goals, I was actually a, a defensive forward. Right. So, manning up there, attacking defender, which was quite easy. <laughs> you just touched on uh, home life. Which room of your house is bigger? The kids' playroom or the wine cellar? Uh, the wine cellar is definitely growing. I've had to move a lot of my wine out to a mate's vineyard um, in the Yarra Valley to try and... Um, one, maybe hide it from my wife, and two, <laughs> I need more room. What the, what's the drop of choice? Oh, we've got to be careful. Tyrrell's. I love Tyrrell's Four Acre Shiraz. I just think that's a brilliant drink. Um, I just released a Pinot myself. Well, it hasn't been released, but we've bottled it, labelled it and everything. So that'll be released early June. Yeah, good. Who have you done that's that with? Exciting. Um, there's four guys in it. So a winemaker, Sam Middleton from Mount Mary, um, who's a friend of mine, and then another winemaker from Hoddles Creek, Franco Diana and his brother Anthony, who are also friends of mine. So, Great. yeah, we, we waxed it the other day. It was just such a, an arduous task. And Michael came out and um, yeah, literally you got to dip every bottle into the wax and wait for it to dry and then turn it. And then, so, there's a, if you ever get one of our wines with the wax not quite right, it was because it was our first time. <laughs> that's great. It's a good little pastime as well. Is it a pastime that's now become a passion? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was never brought up on wine, but I went to Italy for my honeymoon. Yeah. Um, and then came back and I was just, I just you know, wanted to explore that yeah. a lot more. And I've done a few wine courses along the way. And um, yeah, I'm just totally fascinated by it. When can we expect? Early June. First drop. Early, Early June. June, yeah. 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 All right. Is Max going to stock it in his joint? If we allow him to, yeah. <laughs> if, if there's any left, <laughs> it might all sell out prior to that. Have you been to his wine bar? It's quite I good. have, yeah. It's good. No, it's not bad at all. It's Very nice. He hasn't invited me yet. I'm still uh, yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we love your media work, Geordie. So does Soprano661. He says, do you have to pay a fine every time you wear those see-through glasses on Fox Footy? 
It's amazing. And maybe I've got to ch- uh, change them over, but they are legitimate. <laughs> um, I wear contacts during the game, so I, I need... I like them. I need it. Um, I mean, I just... As naive as I was, I just went and tried on some glasses. They, f- they fit my head. I didn't really care about what they looked like. Um, and they worked, but I've had some... Some good feedback. And the person that's probably killed me most is Josh Gibson, who used to wear glasses, yeah. who is more blind than I am, but people thought he was just wearing it as a fashion accessory. But he needs them, but he's just killed it for everyone, I think. What's been your most memorable moment at the D's so far? Most memorable. I mean, I always, I always like finals wins. For me, that's like the, the absolute best. So... Um, the Geelong and Hawthorne win, uh, and coming off the ground and seeing not only the smiles on the on the players' faces, um, seeing vision of of fans who haven't been in that position for a long period of time, I think that brings you great joy as a player. Um, so they're probably the ones that that stick out. Trisha TT has asked, which of your beautiful sons is most likely to have an AFL career? Oh. Um, I wouldn't mind tennis or golf, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit more money and might take that around the world. Um, maybe tennis so I don't have to move as much. But they both, I mean, we're just about to excavate my backyard, so they're crying out for more, more space and just room to move around and use balls. But they all love balls. If they're ever crying, you just throw them a ball and they're happy. So I think they'll be involved in ball sports either way, but not, not too sure which one. A tennis dad. Yeah, a bit of um, Demir Dockage. Not to be. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not him. That wouldn't be great. Um, we sort of touched on this a little bit, but I just want to take you to the question itself from Chris Picola. Can you please give uh, supporters a little bit of hope for the rest of the season? Do you think we need another solid forward option? And will the return of Levis slash May eventually help things turn? Well, I think that those two guys will, will obviously help. They've been terrific players in the AFL system for a long period of time. I, I um, I don't necessarily think um, personnel changes is is um, going to make a huge difference. I think um, one the way we're playing and two the decisions we're making on field can make huge differences. Mm-hmm. And you see with any side in the competition, it doesn't really matter who's in the team. And it's it's always nice to have a few star players around. But there, I mean, we've seen star players go out of sides and the sides still win. And so it's always the system and the decisions that players are making on the field. And I think that has been a lot of our education is um, yeah, around the ground, are we making the right decisions? And more often than not, we're probably not. So our education is trying to teach players who are out there making the right decisions. And I think that can be a big improvement not only defending, but also going forward and helping our forwards out with better options. Um, so I think that's where the improvement will come from. And I, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit optimistic, but I expect it to happen pretty quickly. And I expect us to play a good brand of footy this week and, and use that as a stepping stone to the, the second third of the Just season. Just pick, pick up on that if we can. Was there evidence of that on Anzac Eve where like sort of crunch moments, just a, a, a turnover, a bad decision sort of, you know, turn the tide a little bit yeah I, th- I think so and um it's not so much it's, it's not so much the uh the decision like the disposal decision yeah. but it's more you know rutting patterns right um things that aren't obvious yeah. um to uh, mm. um to people watching the game but um yeah the stuff that makes a ginormous difference yeah like you think of this so i was i think it was clarko that brought it up <laughs> Simon Black wins the Norm Smith medal in the 2003-ish grand final, mm-hmm. one, of, one of those. And he had the ball for like a minute 35 for the whole game. He had 39 touches, had the ball for a minute 35. So it's about educating players. What are you doing for the rest of the game? And are you making the right decision yeah, to put okay. yourself in a position where you can either defend, engage an opposition player, or be an offensive threat? So they're, they're the the learnings that we're trying to still educate. Very good. Paz Gads, what's your favourite book? Ooh. Assuming you're a reader. Yeah, absolutely. Is. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty typical male. Like I like nonfiction, um, autobiography type books. Um, I read this one called Red Notice, which was about this American guy that went to Russia in the early nineties. Um, and when these, all, all these businesses became available, 
And he raised capital in the States, bought all these businesses in Russia that were so cheap. Um, and then eventually got ran out of town by Putin because he was making so much money and the Russians don't like um, people making money in their own country. So he got <laughs> ran out of town and then um, it's just a, such an interesting time in Russia, especially the early 90s. Um, it was quite fascinating. It is a cool place. Have you been to Russia? No, I haven't. It's no. an amazing place. Unbelievable. Yeah. Still to this day, just some incredible things go on there. I was say, it's not on my bucket list. I'm not like... You'd love it. You reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You would. It's it's a real... It's actually in parts, it's a really beautiful country yeah. as well. But... Um, it's a lot of... I remember we were there for the World Cup last year and pulled a news camera out in the middle of the street and all of a sudden we had anywhere from sort of 10 to 12 police officers just come out of nowhere and yeah. just sort of <laughs> we're like, hey, oh, hang on a second, we might put that camera back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, it's a, a fascinating place. Anyway, I digress. Well, that's why it's not on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Jack, uh, what can you tell us about this fella? Any, any, uh, any dirt to dig yeah. or dish even? <sighs> Pretty plain. I just like go from here to home. Yeah, no, not, a, not a whole lot of Pretty dirt. mild mannered. Uh, pretty mild mannered. I know he's been working hard on his, uh, getting his, his wine up and going, <laughs> ready for that. release. So, uh, uh, you were drinking? Still playing, oh, still yeah. playing credit card roulette with, uh, with the boys at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to lunch the day before a game, and I don't know why we do this, it's just probably stupid, but you put all the cards into a hat and then whoever gets drawn out pays for lunch. So it's probably on average like $150 for, for lunch. <laughs> so it's not, a, it's not a great way to end the day. Or, st- or And how have you gone traditionally lunch? with that? I, I think I would probably run it at a 25%, probably one in every four, which is... Seems probably about right. Probably probably probability. Yeah, playing, anyone playing just... Yeah, who gets anyone. stitched up? <laughs> <laughs> it's always... Um, Either Hibbo or Milky. <laughs> and do they get, get furious? And Gorney literally has never paid. Yeah. So he's the lucky one, yeah. Uh. Any anger when they get um, drawn out? Yeah, initially, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Anything else yeah. to finish up? We've got a couple of minutes, Lil. You pull one out of the hat here. Or yeah, have you I'm got anything? No. Give us a tip for the May races. Lil. Yeah, well, we were just talking about the Warnable Cup. Um, whatever gay water, I was chatting to her at the races on Anzac Day and she said whatever she's got running in the cup wins. Well, so you're a day late. So was she, it yesterday? No, well, she had her, oh, in the actual cup. Yeah, in the actual cup. She had cup. a runner yesterday. Yeah, that one. with that one. Um, we've got a couple today, which I think don't think this will be an air on time. So uh, don't, I won't bother tipping Thunderdome, but that should win race five today oh, at Warnable. So everyone at home will be... Kicking, yeah, kicking the yeah. <laughs> not and they'll, us. They'll go back and look at the results, and it'll probably come last. So. You, you, you love it. Obviously, you grew up around around horses, didn't you? Yeah, uh, with your yeah. dad. And yeah, grew up on the farm, so um, always saw horses from the bedroom, but never fully invested. Like I go more so as a social aspect, yeah. but yeah, it's good speaking fun. of social occasions, you just celebrated a milestone. Yes, um, twenty. Well, I was twenty-one two months ago, but. Had the party on the Had weekend. Had the big so How'd that end up? 21st was lots of fun. I uh, feel like that's why I'm still a little bit... Where was it? ...horsier than usual. Horsey. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Talking about my voice there. Um, at home, at nice. the farm. So, yeah, when, when you're on property and there's no time limit, it's, it's, it's a bit yeah. dangerous, but lots of fun. Any always. late night escapades? Oh, I wouldn't have thought. It was very <laughs> sensible. Who was best very on? Very sensible. <laughs> Anyone we'd know? No, nah, no one you'd know. The old man? Um, he was there until he claims he was last man standing. So oh, yeah. he, uh, he pulled the plug on the music just after five, I think. <laughs> and then I think he just like cleaned up the glasses just after that. So he, he waited for everyone to go to bed and then claimed oh, damn, last man. man standing status. So all it's happening. And uh, in AFLW news through, uh, Daisy, has she's re-signed, which is great. Yeah, great result. Yeah, um, she, I was actually at her place a couple of weeks ago, and she's like, I might actually play at the back end of VFL, which, you know, VFL round one's this weekend. So she's like, I might come back in a couple of months. And I was like, you are the bloody machine. So, um, nah, super exciting that she's re-signed to the club. And um, trade period also brought Libby Birch, a premiership player from the Dogs, to the club. So all systems go back at training last night. and. 
we'll uh, get set for a big 2020. Long time away, but all happening. One of the more settled lineups in the uh, AFLW, Melbourne, as well. Yeah, which yeah, is great. We were, we were really fortunate that most of the girls sort of signed on and we kept our core group together. So a few other clubs uh, struggled with the expansion, but we are. Uh, we stayed strong and everyone's uh, back again. It says, it says a bit about mm. you know, what, you, what you girls are creating and the environment. And um, you know, obviously I'm sure some people were, some of the girls could have got you know, better deals or, or whatnot elsewhere, but um, you know, they're invested with in, into each other. So I think it's a great sign that um, that's mean too much moving around in the, in the trade period. Yeah, definitely. And even um, the girls that weren't fortunate enough to get contracts here went on to a lot of them got contracts elsewhere so it just shows that we've built a really strong footy program and other clubs are you know interested in in players that we were unable to retain so yeah there's definitely really good signs coming out of the w program good stuff lil thank you uh geordie last one to you obviously saturday um another big moment for the club um what can you tell supporters right here right now about the way we attack it and it's uh, as i say all on the line isn't it yeah i mean every game from now on in is is huge for this footy club absolutely so um i mean i, I don't know what to sort of say but we're you know we're up for the challenge we're, we're optimistic i mean inside the club we're um we're fully committed we're, we're trying to do as much as we possibly can to um, rectify our season and, and whether that be um, you know vision dissecting our game um, you know helping each other out not listening to people outside um, all that sort of stuff comes into it so um, yeah we're, we're looking forward to getting out there it's been it feels like it's been a long time like it's mm. probably 10 days between games so no we're looking forward to it good luck watching Jack how are you gonna go Oh, I'm still a chance for this. One. <laughs> I'm not pushing it today. I'm, I'm still a chance. I reject it. Yeah, reject it. Strap it up. Be all right. Guys, thanks very much. Will, Jack, Jordy. No worries. And good luck on the weekend. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Inside Melbourne. With thanks to Zurich. We'll see you next week.